good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming along and, and staying for uh, the last couple of sessions uh, today. Um, as I said, I'm going to move through this very, very quickly. When I sat to do this presentation, I actually came up with about 50 use cases that, that I see video being used, and I kind of had to, to, really, to really drill it down to, to those ones that I tend to do. I work a lot with universities and TAFE institutes and RTOs, a little bit in the schools, but, but more so with, with, with that particular sector and hence get to see a lot of really innovative cases of the use of video across those particular institutions. So um, when, when we go out to and work with institutions, we, we basically see the use cases fall into these main categories. And I think they wouldn't be too dissimilar to probably many of the institutions that, that you see. Uh, there is, when you think about your institution, where, wherever it is, it's an educational institution or not, there's tons and tons of places across that institution where video is either created or, or shown or embedded or, or you know, collected and shared and so forth. So I want to share with you 15 of those and, and we'll get stuck into those. I've really divided them up into two main areas, inside and outside the classroom and then more of the marketing sort of, uh, sort of areas. So let's go and start our, our way through this. First one's supporting on-campus content delivery. I mean, that, that, that's typically the main use, putting video content into our courses as a means of providing that learning experience through another means other than traditional paper and so forth. Probably what's a little bit newer in this market is the fact that we're now seeing a lot of 360 degree content, VR content being used. Um, I was at Theta, which is one of the major uh, university conferences a few weeks back, and there was a lot of institutions that are actually building a lot of VR programs and, and augmented reality programs to take students into different dimensions with their different learning. So a, a good example of that, um, this is one that we threw uh, together recently. Uh, this guy's giving an overview of, of Central Park. We've got audio? Yeah, yeah. Cool. In 1857, Central okay, so Park was designed by the same duo of Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox. You know, embedding, these two embedding content into that 360 degree video, which can then be clickable and take people off into different directions and so forth. So we're starting to see much more engaging content items as far as that video is concerned. And we can start embedding those in our courses and making use of those. I was recently over at University, uh, no, AUT, Auckland University of Technology, and they've just bought a whole range of these 360 degree cameras which they're sitting in their, uh, in, their, in, their, in some of their classrooms sitting in the middle of the tables like this and as students work on projects the cameras are following the students around and collecting and then they're taking those cameras, take the recordings away and then they're um, doing peer assessment on the discussions that were going on in those. So really some interesting use cases around that going on at the moment. Um, moving on. Second one is, is typically flipped classroom. Organisations have been doing this for a long, long while now um, in terms of capturing this sort of experience where you've got the educator out of the front at a lectern and then you've got the, uh, the students in a traditional, traditional lecture theatre and so forth. What is changing, though, is that the traditional lecture theatre is disappearing, as you know. So in many of the universities that you go into today, the concept of a learning space is very different from when perhaps you and I went through university and sat in a room with 400 other students and, and took a didactic sort of learning experience. So what has changed is that. So what that means is the tools to collect those experiences are now made available at the desktop level as opposed to the lectern level. So the ability for us to sit down or again around a table in a coffee shop anywhere in those where these new learning spaces are popping up around our institutions and being able to record a lecture type experience which captures audio and video and content and, and streams it all into one stream. And a good example on the left hand side there is that typical thing. Picture in picture in the bottom, move it around, chaptering, slides, audio, video, the user controls the, the playback experience. That's where we're going with these sort of particular tools. On the right hand side, I was really fortunate three weeks ago to, to spend some time you know, with uh, NTNU in Norway. Uh, in Trondheim in Norway, and this was one of their lecture theatres where we did most of our presentations during the couple of days, 
And it's really cool space. I've never seen anything like this. It's a lecture theatre, but it's then broken down into group tables. Each of those group tables have speakers, have their own big screen TV at the back of them. So they can be lectured to, and then they can all turn around and have a discussion and share that. And then they can record all of that and put them into their courses, do video assessments, those sort of things. They're the sorts of learning spaces we're starting to see. Number three, screen capture and how-to videos. Um, again, nothing real new about this sort of thing other than the tools that are available today are much more easy to use. They're being designed for educators and being designed for students to use, so they're very easy to do. You can see the tool on the left-hand side there. You know, it's not hard to know what to do with that tool. You press the red button to start it, you press it again to stop it, and it records screen and camera or audio. Uh, turn any of those items off and you capture that particular experience. Um, I was working with a TAFE recently where we captured a whole lot of Photoshop vignettes, the guy teaching technique and you had to do Photoshop, five minute vignettes on different experiences, capturing this tool in a room by himself and uploaded them straight into the course and made them available as an asset which can be reused. Number th four. Probably a big topic at the moment, those that came to my presentation yesterday, we talked a little bit more about this. I do a lot with um, vet, vet organisations and, and RTOs around evidence collection in the workplace. Um, and video assessments is one of those things which we can now do quite easily. Everyone's got mobile phones, there's a lot of tablet devices out there as well, which can capture on the job training, attach them to the Moodle assessment type, and then upload that. Not only upload the video assessment, but then moving into number five. Social oh, media let me is just a play a little bit of this. Century tool, mm. holding great importance and influence over millennials, their beliefs and their body image. Social media has both positive and negative power. Oops. Allowing people to express their beliefs and values outwardly and unapologetically, whilst also diminishing people's body image and self-worth. Okay, so that was an example of, of we had a user group meeting um, a couple of weeks ago in, in down here in Melbourne at Monash College, and University of Queensland gave some really great examples of video assessment work that they're doing there. This student put all of this video together, it was about body image for a marketing course, uh, interviewed all of the students in the university, spliced it all together and then uploaded that. So they were teaching them a whole range of video skills as well as using the technology to share that content and have it work its way through the learning management system as well. So some very clever stuff. If you do want to take a look at video assessments, uh, just Google University of Queensland video assessments. They've got this wonderful public facing page of resources and everything like that, very neat. As an extension to that then is video feedback. So the ability to provide feedback and coming back to, to the last presentation that we had there where parents perhaps want to see a little bit more in-depth knowledge about the assessment processes that go on in the schools, teachers can actually click an icon, and certainly with one of our tools, can click an icon inside the toolbar, the Addo toolbar, in the feedback mechanism within the Moodle assignment, open up a camera or a screen sharing device and share the student's assignment add video, add audio, add context. I think that's the important thing is adding context and be able to upload that back to the student, back into the gradebook inside Moodle and then the student can see the feedback in a much more three or four dimensional experience as opposed to seeing a piece of paper with a lot of red writing over the top of it. Um, number six, enhancing an array of scaffolded activities. So it makes sense that if you can expose video content via the Addo toolbar with a mashup icon, then you can do that wherever the Addo toolbar exists inside a course. So think discussion forum, quizzes, assignments, blogs, wikis, all of those places where that toolbar exists, you have that capability to be able to then expose video content. So get rid of those boring discussion forums. What we can do now is we can have a discussion forum, and I see this a lot in online courses where there's no students on campus, is the first discussion forum is introduce yourself to the rest of the cohort. So the students actually hop on, produce a little video in the discussion forum, and then post that back and people reply with their video, and then everyone gets to know themselves as part of that particular cohort. It's breaking down a lot of those barriers. Put a video quiz, so it, use the quiz feature with Inside Moodle, but say, watch this video and then answer these 10 questions. So we expose video that way as well. Streaming of special events. Very, very popular at the moment. Uh, again, uh, extending the community of who gets access to, to content with inside our institutions. I'm seeing a lot of universities now uh, doing live webcasting of graduation ceremonies, of special events. 
Um, University of Queensland, which is a big user of Kaltura, when Obama came out for the G20 a number of years back, um, he, he basically went to UQ and did his big speech while, while he was out here for the G20, and that was broadcast out through UQ's network on Kaltura network to gosh, the world. And anyone who had a link could actually watch that. It wasn't just through the learning management system. Anyone who had a link to that could do that. So we can now extend a lot of these uh, sort of events out to a much wider community. Number eight. So let, that, that's kind of like the ones I covered off in the teaching and learning side and, and inside and outside the classroom. The following seven relate to um, more of the marketing side as well. This is very cool. Um, the ability to, and I think some of you do this in H5P as well, we've, we've, there's some other tools out there that allow us to do this as well, but building branching simulations. So taking people on a journey in a video that allows them to make a decision and then take them off in a certain direction and then come back if they've made a mistake and so forth. Let me play a little bit of this one for you. Bit of context, um, Deloitte in New Zealand had a lot of trouble attracting Generation Z uh, to, to, to graduates to, to join them. So they put together this sort of marketing piece to try and attract people about the values of what we look for in a Deloitte employee. Audio. Okay, so what do we do? Keep quiet. Keep quiet. All right, let's do that. I like your thinking. Okay, I'm not going to go through. We could go back and we could do rub it in and we could see what happens then or we could do tell him, which is the right thing to do because honesty pays and you get a thumbs up and so forth. So there's about seven different scenarios that were put together to build those, those features of a, of a great employee. So that's all done in a drag and drop interface, done in the platform that manages all of that, produces an MP4 video which then can be embedded somewhere on a website or wherever. So seeing a lot of those sort of tools out at the moment, very, very cool tools. There's the uh, interface on the right-hand side. Time's running now. Video portal, campus tours, interfaces, embeds on other sites. So uh, bringing YouTube into the institution, if you like. There's lots of issues with YouTube in terms of ownership of content, IP, password protection, all of that sort of stuff. Institutions now want to bring that same capability to their own institutions, and they can do that with this, these video portals, which they own and manage and so forth. Federation Uni, if you do a search for Fedflix, Federation Uni has a really cool our, our customer facing sort of portal which they promote uh, the you know campus tours and interviews with lecturers and students and so forth similar sort of thing virtual open days I won't play this video but this is a, a one of the uh, student service uh, people in this particular university talking about the upcoming virtual open days what they're going to see taking them on a journey of different things to invite people along to those particular sessions let's go to 11 Video emails, this is very cool. So this is something very new as well. The ability to personalize the email experience. And so typically if you, if you do some work, if, if I go and meet someone uh, from Cal, uh, as Kaltura employee, I go and meet someone, I now follow up with a video email, which basically I sit at the machine, I'll record a short video saying, thanks, it was great, we talked about this and we talked about this. By the way, here's some attachments to some documents we talked about, or here's some videos that kind of like relate to what I talked about at all, all in the one nice little interface which they click on in their mail and play. And then also they get the ability, I get the ability to see who's opened it, how long they spent watching it, all those sort of things as well. Really cool tools to just make that uh, email experience a bit more personalised. Number 12, interviews, guidance and support. Again, I won't play this one uh, all the way, well, actually I won't play much of it all, but the ability to interview students before they come on campus and make it a bit more personalised and then have students upload video content as well. And we're seeing a lot of this with employers. I won't play that one through. A lot of what we're seeing around the world at the moment is about addressing accessibility in our institutions and making things a lot more equitable. And the way that we can do that with video naturally is to use captioning, use transcripts, make sure that our videos can be seen on screen readers, can be 
uh, shortcut keys can be used and so forth. So we spent a lot of time, you know, basically out of the box to make sure that all of these sort of experiences provide these things. But not only do that, but do that in different languages. So we, I work with a lot of international schools who want their lectures automatically captioned in Chinese or Indian or whatever, and, and that's automatic things that can happen today, which is really neat. Number 14, the last one in this section, staff development. You know, I'm not going to go too much further on it. It makes sense being able to record these and then share them around staff. It kind of like lends itself to screen captures and things like that as well. And then the last one that I came up with, which um, we're just starting to see a little bit more of now, is alumni. So not only pushing video content out to alumni, but the opposite. Having alumni push video content back to the institution and share that with the rest of the community. This is what I've done since I left the university. This is my workplace. This is my boss. Um, and, and this is what I do, you know, you should do this because it was good for me as well. So alumni sharing a lot of this sort of information as they go through. So to summarise, a uh, few areas there, you'll get the deck for this for those that, that want to get the deck. Um, I've got a much bigger deck of the other 50 as well. Um, yeah, and that's me. So 15 use cases in 15 minutes. Thank you very much, guys.